Thank you for visiting Pastor Wyatt TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWyatt.com. It's probably the most intriguing horse to me of the patterns and the numbers on Thoroughbred. Uh, Two-year-old, starting at Delmar, 6.1, 4.2, 2.3. So he showed it, too, that he was fast, okay? Uh, comes back, uh, Santa Anita runs a four, even four. Vet scratches, uh, comes back, runs a four again, uh, moves back into Bob Baffert's bond, and, and, and Baffert ain't sending him there. Jimmy Bond's there, or Bob's going himself. None of them are going for crab, crab, crab cakes. Uh, we know that. If they're going, they're going because they think they got a shot. This horse has a 2.3 as, as a two-year-old. I tend to think off the paired fours, uh, he's going to go forward. He's going to go past his best two-year-old number, which puts him faster than a 2.3, which puts him square in the mix. Now... Getting away from the numbers for, for, for a bit, he has been a little bit of a disappointment. You, you know, he didn't go, we, we talked about on the original Derby show, and, and again on the Oak show, that we like two-year-olds that are good horses and nice horses of this caliber when they make their first start at three to go past their number. He didn't do that, but he, he's, he's got those two fours, he's got the vet scratch that shows, so maybe there was a little issue you know, if they're sending him to Baltimore for the Preakness, I'm sure that whatever issue there may have been is gone, if there was one. So, dangerous. My favorite, uh, of, of the three classics, you know, it's the, the, the most fun classic because the, the pressure of the Derby is over. You have a Derby winner, so it's all about, you know, everybody's coming here. to have, It's a big party, and ha people want to come here, have fun, and see the Derby horse, the der Derby winner run, and that's what the Preakness is all about. Of course, we'll start with National Treasure, your big horse in the Preakness. John on the rail. We're already discussing sort of the uh, application of blinkers. What is your thought process there? Well, I think he's, uh, he's a horse that runs in spurts, and uh, we thought maybe the blinkers, maybe he'll focus a little more, and um, I talked to Johnny uh, Belasco is the jockey about it, and I asked him, I called him, says, you know, I was thinking about putting a little blinker on him. I worked him with blinker, and he thought it wouldn't hurt him because, you know, when he gets in between horses, he's he's still immature. He's, he's still, he's still that he hasn't filled into that, you know, he's a tall, you know, his frame is, and uh, so we're trying something a little bit different. We need, we need to find about three lengths. We need to find three lengths, like, tomorrow you know so uh we're we're working on that and um he should run well i mean uh, jimmy said he's been and the rider said he's been moving over the track it's a really nice it's really soft and here and so uh i've always lo i've been fond of the surface here so they, they they go over really well and pace wise thinking of sending him of course we do have the scratch your first mission as well which kind of changes the complexion of the race yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, the, the break is important. You know, the, 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 you can be in a great post, but, uh, you know, he, he leaves the gate okay, not as strong, um, um, and so he needs to get running. And I think Johnny, once he gets his, you know, they get him away from there, if he breaks clean, you know, I hate being in the one hole because usually they, they miss a half a step or, you know, I just don't like the one. Uh, I just re I remember drawing it with, with American Pharaoh and everything was going so well, and then he drew the one, and I was just fretting about it. And then after watching him turn for home, I was thinking, why did I fret all week about this, you know? But, you know, if you have the best horse, uh, then, you know, but we're not talking about American Pharaoh here, you know? But, you know, I think it's still gonna be a good race, and it's gonna be exciting, and to see if, like I said, it's, it's all about the Derby winner, and, and we're all, you know, we're trying to see if we can, you know, beat the derby winner, you know, and so uh, it, it's, it'll be a fun race. You just got in. What did you see from National Treasure this morning? He went nice. He's, he's, he's one of these horses. He's always been a little high strung in the morning. It's real quiet here, so he's been training well. Uh, I spoke to my rider. He says he's been really likes the, the surface here, and he's been, you know, he doesn't get worked up. There's not a lot of horses out there. At home, he gets a little bit worked up, and, uh, but here he's been, he's been fine. And talking about American Pharaoh, you already mentioned one of your seven Preakness winners. Uh, look, if you got an eighth, it will be a record. What, how special would that be for you? 
I, I really don't think about records. I, I've never been, you know, if it happens, it happens. But uh, more importantly, I like to see all my horses run really well. I like to see them all win. And if you think back to those greats that have won this race, what would be some of your favorite memories here at Pimlico? Well, I mean, I've, I've had some, I've, I've, the reason I've won it so many times, I've, I've always had the best horse. The best horse usually wins this race. You know, we had, I think the Silver Charm race was really the most, it was like, I didn't really, I just won the Derby and I was just flying high and I didn't, I was, we were coming into the Preakness and to me it was like, if he wins, fine. If he doesn't, hey, I don't care. I won the Kentucky Derby, you know? And then he won and I was actually, I thought he got beat. I was watching the wrong finish line. I was watching before and everybody said he won and I remember they had me on television and I was telling the owner Bob Lewis we won he says I don't think we won just relax you're don't embarrass yourself we didn't win and then he turns around Nick Zito was behind me and he says Bob Lewis says Nick did he win yes he won Bob okay so uh and then when I saw the replay I saw I was watching them I, I was so nervous you know it was like but that was an exciting race because you had free, they came from the Derby. It was a short field in the Derby. See, and, and that's the thing. I think it was like 12 or 14 horses in the Derby. So they all came back and ran in the, in the Preakness. So there was a rivalry going on. There was a big rivalry going on. And so that made it, you know, now there's not that much. A lot of guys, they, there's so many and they have bad trips. They just go to Belmont and wait. But in those days, there was, you know, there was a big rivalry with Freehouse and, um, the other horse that ran second in the Derby, I can't think of his name, but, um, huh? Captain Bodgett, yeah. As a matter of fact, if it, Gary said he was beat, Freehouse had him beat, and when he felt Captain Bodgett come to him, that's when Silver Charm uh, jumped up and won that race. So that was probably the most exciting race. Uh, and, you know, point given, he was a favorite. I thought he'd win the Triple Crown. and. He just didn't run in the in the in the Derby, and it was so disappointing. He came here and he won that, and then won the Belmont by twelve. It was sickening, you know, because I thought that was going to be my Triple Crown horse. And, and real quiet was really exciting. I knew he was in the eleven. They said, oh, you know, he can't win from the eleven. He ran huge, but him and Victory Gallop, they were just battling. There was a rivalry going on with them, and so um, and it was good to come with Looking and Lucky, who was the the Derby favorite, just completely got wiped out. And then, you know, he came back and won the, the re redeemed himself, won the, uh, the Preakness for those clients that were, you know. So it's, it's, they're fun, they're exciting, you know, all the, the classics, I mean, they're so exciting and that's why it's, it's so important that the tradition of the classics is what keeps us, keeps the game going, you know. And so, um, and that's why it's, it's, it's all about the Derby winner. It's all about, it's all about Mage and these fans here, they're here to watch Mage run. We're not here to watch National Tragedy. They want to see Mage win the win the Preakness so they can go on for the Belmont and keep keep, keep the party going. Well, you're talking about the tradition and, and the rivalries across the classics and Concord. I mean, there's only one Derby winner in this race, um, and some of the thinking has, has changed in, in the West of King races. Do you think that moving or looking at um, Preakness as running late or changing the calendar a little bit? No, I, I, you know, we've thought about that, but you get the tradition. It's very important because that's what makes a triple crown. I think people would, wouldn't, it wouldn't be as, as important because it, it's a challenge. It's challenging. And a lot of people, they don't run their horses back because maybe they, you know, it's, you got to remember we, just to get into the derby, we run them a lot just to, to get them in there. And so, um, and so. I think they would run them back if they felt their horses came out of it, you know, they, if they're tired or whatever. And, you know, the, the Derby with 20 horses, you get a rough trip, a lot of them, you know, they just, you know, they need that extra time. But um, but back in the day, look at uh, Secretariat, there wasn't that many horses would run back. So it was just him and Sham, you know, just trying to, you know, beat each other. But um, but uh, it's, it's always going to be an important race. And as long as the Derby winner's in here, that's the most important thing. It's, very important that the Derby winner is in the race. Well, 50 years since Secretariat actually won. I know it. So it's, uh... I'm still waiting for my secretary. Quick question about Faiza as well. Your big filly coming up today. Faiza. Faiza. Excuse me. Faiza. Faiza. 
in the Black Eyed Susan today. How does she travel over? Yes, uh, she's doing really well. Um, you know, she's a horse that, you know, she's been running against the same horses, and so now she's, you know, taking on a different uh, uh, group. But, you know, I, I think she's, I'm really looking forward to watching her run. And so uh, she's, you know, she's really smart. She handles everything really well. And uh, I think a mile and eighth is going to be a, a, a good distance for her. I'm, I've never, in all her races, she's never, she's handled two turns really well. And so, um, so I'm looking forward to her, to her running. I definitely am too. Quickly, some of your other runners as well, having a meltdown in Chick Lang. What spurred the turn back in distance? Uh, uh, having a meltdown, he's a sprinter. I mean, I took him to Saudi. He was a little bit too, he ran hard. And uh, he drew the one. He's extremely fast horse. So, uh, he's, he's, you know, I got him ready really quick for this. And so uh, I brought him along. I have an Arabian Lion who he ran really well in the Lexington Stakes. It looks like he was just going to win just open lanes and he just he got caught I, I don't know what it is about that horse i don't know if he just stopped running I, I you know i'm trying to figure him out his distance if he's you know he's a heavy strong horse but um hopefully he he'll run well i want to give him his, another chance at at a mile and a six i was almost thinking of running him in the in the preakness you know and um if the race hadn't failed i probably would have thrown him in the preakness but i just mile on the 16th i thought maybe it's a good distance for him. Thank you so much. That's all I need. Okay. Nobody does it better.